From your Chapter 17 folder, open the file Chapter 17 Editing Details. This is where we roughly got to in a previous exercise, having imported a standard detail as a DWG, placed it in our model, and then hidden the majority of the line work. What happens now, though, is that this standard detail doesn't exactly fit our purpose, and we do need to change it. This is the main reason for bringing this in as an imported detail rather than a link. Now we have this detail in here, we can query it. Select and highlight the detail. Click on Query. Select one of the elements, and Revit will indicate the layer that that object was originally drawn on. There we have the layer hanger. What I want to do with this detail is extend the bolt that hangs it from the ceiling. The other option I have when selecting the DWG is to explode it. There's two parts to the explode. I can create a partial explode or a full explode. The partial explode will explode the elements until they're back down to the next level of detail. That is, if there were any blocks contained in this imported symbol, we then see those as individual blocks. Or we can do a full explode, which completely disassembles the whole object. There are issues with both. The issue with exploding elements is that they will leave traces of the DWG in your model, which can have effects on the model's performance. In this instance, I'm going to use the full explode. The full explode reduces everything to its component elements which you should then change to a matching Revit one. Here you can see if I select a detail line, it's now got a line style that is hanger. And in this instance, it might be OK. But if you do have a set of standard line styles, then you will want to select these lines. And let's select the chain as an example. I may then want to change those to thin lines. A similar thing occurs with the filled region. If I select the filled region, you can see from the properties palette that it has a name pipehanger.dwg-1. I can change it to match one of my standard solid fills. And I'm now ready to start editing the rest of the detail. Create a crossing window through the bolt and the nut, and then click on Move. We can move this vertically up through the ceiling, and as we move those objects, the two lines stretch. Let's try that again. And I'll put thin lines on so we can see this detail a bit clearer. And I'll copy the washer from the base, select the washer, click on Copy, choose a suitable base point, and an end point, and tidy up my drawing. Here you can see that I can select the lines and drag them into the correct location. I can now unhide the pipes that I hid in a previous exercise. From the view control bar, click on reveal hidden elements, and I'm going to select the pipe that's coming through the detail, and click on unhide element. Close the reveal hidden elements button, and we can now see the pipe that we're detailing. Well, I'd actually like my detail to match the size of this pipe. That is, after all, what we're trying to do. So use the same techniques. I'll select the bottom part of this detail and move it. Everything stretches. I'll do the same for the sides. Press and hold the Control key to add lines. Then click on Move and do the same on the other side. Press and hold the control key, and move. This time I'll type in 30, so that it matches the previous. Let's move the detail up slightly. And we're almost done. Our pipe isn't connected to a system which is one of the reasons it's not showing the rise and fall symbol. 
we now need to edit the region that shows our pipe drop. Select the region and click on Edit Boundary. I'm going to delete one of these lines, then select the overall arc and click on Rescale. Click the center point of the circle, one of the end points, and then the outer face of the pipe. I'll do the same for this arc, resize, base point, end point, center, and now draw an arc using the start end radius. There's a start, there's the end, and a tangential radius. Click on finish. The surplus detail lines can now be deleted. I can hear you asking, why didn't you just scale the pipelines as well? Well, if I had done that, which is a valid way of working if I wanted a standard detail, I wouldn't have been able to tag the pipe. So if the pipe size changes, the tag will too. I can now edit the location of the tag and using the annotate tab, place additional notes on the detail so we convey the right amount of information. This error message means that the text has disappeared outside the boundary. If I select the viewport boundary, notice that we have a double line around it. This external line controls what we can see from the text. I can now add leaders and any dimensions that are necessary.